Dear students, this is Dr. S. M. Indamati, Assistant Professor from the Department of Biotechnology, School of Bio and Chemical Engineering, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. Today I am here to talk about the antigens of Yersinia and plague. Let's first have a look into the general characteristics of Yersinia. Yersinia is basically a parasite in rodents. Rodents are nothing but mammals which have a continuously growing a single pair of incisors as their tooth. Examples for mam uh, rodents are uh, mice, rats, porcupines, hamsters, guinea pigs, etc. So these organisms basically are present in the rodents and infect them. The most important uh, species among the genus Yersinia is Yersinia pestis which is responsible for causing the most dreadful disease called plague. So Yersinia is a gram negative ovoid bacilli that is rod in shape. They have rounded ends and convex sides. Uh, they, when they are stained with Gimsa stain and methylene blue stain, they show a char characteristic uh, type of staining called bipolar staining which means the ends of the bacilli are stained thoroughly but the center portion is left clear. Uh, th this gives a characteristic safety pin appearance under the microscope. Uh, they are non-motile, non-sporing which means they don't move, they don't produce spores and they are non-acid fast which means the organism tend to decolorize easily when used uh, when acidic decolorizers are used during staining procedures. Uh, talking about its cultural characteristics, uh, again uh, Yersinia does not require any special media for its growth. Uh, it could grow on uh, nutrient agar itself under optimal conditions. They are able to grow on blood agar and meconchi agar as well. If grown on nutrient broth containing oil or ghee floated on top, they give a characteristic stalactite like growth which means the growth starts from the surface of the broth and gets into the broth and you can see an image of the stalactite uh, formation by Yersinia pestis in the last image. Uh, stalactites are nothing but uh, you would have heard about stalactites. Stalactites are uh, sharp mineral deposits that hung uh, that hang from the roofs or ceilings of mountains and caves. Similarly, Yersinia pestis forms a stalactite like growth when grown in nutrient broth containing oil or ghee floated on top of the broth. Uh, talking about its biochemical characteristics, Yersinia pestis is indole, VP, citrate, urease and oxidase negative while MR and catalase positive. Talking about its virulence factors, Yersinia has a complex antigenic structure composed of at least 20 different antigens responsible for its virulence. But uh, we'll just look into very few uh, important virulence antigens. The first one is a heat labile protein envelope antigen that is present in the capsule region of this Yersinia. It's also called as fraction 1 which is able to inhibit phagocytosis and intracellular killing of the uh, organism inside the human host or animal host and they are plasmid included. Then you have two separate antigens called V and W which are produced simultaneously but separately and these two antigens also have the same function as fraction 1. They are able to inhibit phagocytosis and intracellular killing of the bacilli and this is also plasmid encoded. And then we have another substance called bacteriosin or pesticin. This particular component produced by Yersinia pestis is able to inhibit other species of Yersinia. Then we have an unidentified surface component uh, which is able to take up all the aromatic dyes when grown on uh, culture media and they are able to form colored colonies. When talking about toxins of plague, they are categorized basically into two classes, class 1 and class 2. Class 1 toxic uh, are basic, class 1 toxins are basically endotoxins, they are lipopolysaccharides that are highly similar to that of uh, the toxins of enteric bacilli. And then we have the class 2 toxins which are proteins and they have the properties of both exotoxins as well as endotoxins. They are thermolabile which means they could not withstand heat and they are called as murine toxins because they have uh, so much affinity towards uh, the cells of uh, mice as well as rats. And uh, this particular class 2 toxin are able to cause local edema and necrosis in experimental animals. Plague. Plague was an ancient scourge to mankind which was uh, scourge means it's a trouble or suffering to mankind because 
plague was an extremely dreadful disease which causes so many pandemics throughout the world so many times. Uh, the discovery of plague dates back to the uh, biblical era but that is completely doubtful. Plague came into prominence when it caused 100 million deaths in 542 AD. Uh, it was during the period of Emperor Justinian and it was called Justinian era and that was bubonic plague. The most important pandemic or uh, the renowned pandemic of uh, plague happened in 14th century uh, where plague was named as Black Death where uh, when it took away around quarter of the inhabitants of the world. And after this uh, plague pandemic or this uh, Black Death, the last pandemic of plague happened in the year 1894 in Hong Kong, which uh, continued in India in the year 1896. And till 1918, plague was inside India and it caused around 10 million deaths. In fact, in 18th and 19th century, plague was a bit quiescent. It was, it was not that outpouring. Plague, uh, it survives still in scattered areas. In 1981, uh, the world totally reported around just 191 cases of plague and 24 deaths. But still, plague uh, is been like confined to an endemic foci and it is seen scattered in few countries even now. There are two natural cycles of plague seen. Uh, one is the urban or domestic plague, another one is the wild or sylvatic plague. Urban plague infects the humans as well as the rodents who live among them. While the wild or sylvatic plague affects only the wild rodents and it is completely independent of human beings. That means it does not affect the human beings at all. So types of plague. When it comes to uh, human uh, plague, plague takes three forms, bubonic, pneumonic and septicemic. Bubonic plague. After an incubation, basically plague is a, a zoonotic disease. Uh, plague uh, bacterium enters or it uh, since it infects rodents infection from rodents to rodents get transferred through fleas or rat fleas uh, that is called the, the, the special vector that is present in case of plague is Xenopsiella choppis. Uh, apart from Xenopsiella choppis, we have another vector like Xenopsiella astia as well as Ceratophilus fasciatus. So these three are important plague vectors which are able to transfer the bacterium between rodents or it could able to spread the infection between rodents and when the road and when the fleas bite these infected rodents and when they bite humans also they transfer the disease to us also. When the flea bites us after an incubation period of two to five days bubonic plague starts through the infection of lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are bean like organ present in the immune system of uh, humans and the lymph nodes start to get infected uh, on the site of entry of the bacilli. In certain conditions only minor symptoms are produced and that condition is called pestis minor when the organism is just confined to the site of entry. If the organism enters through the legs. Generally, uh, rat fleas bite humans in their legs and so the inguinal lymph nodes are involved in infection. Inguinal lymph nodes are present in the groin region and that's why this type of plague has got this name called bubonic plague. Bubon means groin. Uh, so after the involvement or infection of the inguinal lymph nodes, the bacilli enters the blood and it causes bacteremia. And then uh, it causes hemorrhages and intravascular coagulation leading to gangrene of the skin, fingers as well as penis. A gangrene is nothing but a condition where a particular region of the human body will be left anoxic which means oxygen supply would be completely cut and blood circulation will be completely stopped to that area and the, org and the particular region will become uh, totally black. The only way to escape from gangrene is amputating that part completely or else gangrene will spread throughout the body. So this is about bubonic plague. Then we have uh, pneumonic plague. Pneumonic plague uh, spreads by droplet infection as the name indicates. Uh, the bacilli enters the lungs and cause hemorrhagic 
uh, lung abscesses and so on they start to produce hemorrhagic pneumonia cyanosis is very prominent which means blue coloration of the organs is much prominent bloody mucoid sputum is one special characteristic of uh, pneumonic plague and uh, this bloody mucoid sputum uh, comprises the bacilli in larger numbers generally pneumonic plague uh, follows bubonic plague it does not occur separately then we have uh, septicemic plague this is generally a terminal event for bubonic and pneumonic plague uh, rarely it occurs as a separate infection uh, so here septicemic plague indicates that uh, local sepsis will be uh, formed in uh, internal organs uh, the organism enters the bloodstream multiplies there produce toxic products and it causes septic shock uh, in the internal organs meningitic involvement is very rare when it comes to treatment the drugs of choice would be streptomycin tetracycline chloramphenicol or gentamicin uh, in the earlier stages of the disease to protect from mortality we have reached the end of slides thank you students for watching this presentation